Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and in this video, we're gonna talk about seven most common DAX mistakes that people make. Now, these are combination of mistakes and misconceptions that people have about DAX, and hopefully, after you watch this video, you will neither have those misconceptions nor probably would you make these mistakes. Let's just get started. All right, the first one is that people tend to believe that DAX is just like Excel. People who come from an Excel background and they tend to learn DAX, since they get to see these very familiar looking formulas like sum, count, and average, they tend to believe that these formulas work in the same way as they work in Excel. Now, that is absolutely not true. This is more of a misconception. Now, the thing is that in DAX, everything works based on filters and filter context. And if you don't know what these terminologies actually mean, you should take a look at a video that I just did a few days ago on filter context, and that is is going to clarify what these terms mean and how do DAX formulas actually work. But the main point is that DAX formulas are not like Excel formulas. All right, the second one is not following DAX writing conventions. So take a look at this little presentation that I have. Uh, whenever you are trying to refer to a particular column, you always precede that column with the name of the table it's coming from. So take a look at this particular measure. In this measure, I am trying to do a sum of the amount column and the amount column is actually coming from the sales table. So I have written the name of the sales table. This is a convention that you actually have to follow to write good DAX. Now take a look at another convention, which is if you're trying to refer to a measure directly, so I'm just trying to refer to this particular measure that I have created total sales, and I'm just trying to multiply total sales with 10% to, to get whatever commission that I want to calculate. So whenever you're trying to refer to a measure, you write the measure directly without the name of the table, but whenever you're trying to refer to a column, you always precede that with the name of the table. Now, people often believe that if you do not follow these conventions, you will have a wrong output. That's not true. You will still get to have the right output. But let's just imagine that you're trying to read these DAX formulas on somebody's blog, or maybe you're trying to read a book on DAX and you're trying to read these formulas. And if I just don't follow these conventions, you will actually get confused what is actually a measure and what is actually a column. So take a look. I'm trying to find the net sales. And in the net sales, total sales is actually a measure. But I made a mistake of writing the table name before that, it might seem like a column to you, but it's actually not a column, it's actually a measure. And I'm subtracting that from the commission measure. So there is no need of writing the table name before you write the measure. So follow these conventions, make sure that you write the name of the table before you refer to a column, and make sure that you do not write the table if you're trying to refer to a measure. All right, the third one is that people often believe that measures are rows of the table. That is absolutely not true. And the way you create a column is not the way you actually create a measure. So whenever you're trying to create a column, obviously the calculation is going to go row by row by row in each and every row of that particular table. But measure is by default not the row of that table. So let's just say that I'm trying to create a measure and the name is measure itself. And maybe I'm just trying to write a simple if formula. And in the if formula, I am maybe trying to refer a column of my table. So the name of the table is data and I'm just trying to refer to any column. Let's just say that discount applied column. So if I just maybe start to write discount apply, you can see that it doesn't really give me even a suggestion to go pick up that column. The mistake is that this is a measure. A measure is not the row of the table. So the way I do that is that whenever I'm trying to refer to a column inside of an if or inside of the related function, I actually have to create a row context by using an iterator like a sumx function or the filter function or any of these functions that have the ability to pick up a table and allow you to access a column in that table. So let's just see. So I'm just going to maybe write a sumx formula. In the sumx formula, I'm saying the first part is a table. That means go in every single row of this table that I mentioned. So I mentioned the name of the table as data. Now go in every single row of the table and then write the if. And in, inside of the if, if I now try to refer to the discount applied column, I would be able to do that. I was not able to do it earlier because earlier that was not the row and I artificially have to create a row context here to be able to go row by row by row. The similar thing happens whenever you're trying to write the related function and just to see that if I try to maybe write the related function outside of the sumx and I try to fetch any of the columns uh, from the calendar table, you will see that I would not be able to select that column. But if I try to go inside 
of the sumx function which allows me to access the row by row context i would be able to do that so if i just write related and you can see that now i am able to pick up any particular column of the related table all right so just remember that measures are not the rows of the table and if you're trying to access a particular column using an if or a related function you actually have to create a row context using any of the iterators a sumx a filter or any of these functions all right the fourth one is not understanding the difference between the scalar functions and table functions now this was also the mistake that i was personally making for a very long time before i actually understood this now there are two types of functions in dax now one are scalar functions that means these functions have the ability to deliver you a single value output that means the output is going to be one single value and then there are table functions these functions have the ability to return you a full table as an output table simply means that something that has multiple columns and multiple multiple rows now you clearly have to understand what delivers you a scalar value and what delivers you a table then there are set of functions which have the ability to deliver both i mean it can actually return you a single value and it can also return you a full table now you have to actually use the scalar functions and table function correctly inside of your measures let me explain so one such function is a calculate function so i'm just going to write calculate as the first part of calculate it actually asks you for an expression that means it's asking you for a scalar value give me one single value a measure a calculation that results in one single value so i can just write one one is one single value and then in the second part of the calculate it actually asks you for a table so if i just write one one is not a table and if i close the bracket commit to that it's actually going to give me an error the other common types of errors is that you write a measure and inside of the measure you write the filter function and maybe you write that you would want to filter the data table and expression is equals to one equals to one any random condition now if i commit to that it actually will give me an error because in a measure if you drag this measure to the visual here you cannot really display the full table as an output so you have to clearly understand that which function delivers you a table and which function delivers you a scalar value and then use those functions correctly inside of the input of the tax functions that you're writing supply a table where it's asking you a table supply a scalar value where it's asking you for a scalar value all right mistake number five a lot of times people end up believing that this total or the total that you see in the visual actually is the summation of the displayed rows in the matrix or the pivot table that you have created in power bi that is absolutely not true every single number that you happen to see in power bi or in the matrix visual that you have created is running on its own filter context now if you again do not understand what you actually mean by a filter context i will recommend you that you actually watch a video but the big point that i want actually want to make out of this mistake is that the totals that you end up seeing in your visual they are actually not necessarily the summation of the displayed rows of the matrix visual all right the sixth one this is more of a misconception so people actually believe that if you create a measure in a particular table they are somehow related and the table has an impact on the measure this is absolutely not true so you can see that i have created a measure called unique invoices and the containing table of this particular measure is the data table now this is just a containing table even if i move the measure from the data table and place this measure the same measure the same calculation inside of the calendar table this will actually give me the same result so how do i do that i go to the home table I, I change the home table from data to the calendar and you can see that this is going to be moved from here and placed right here and my calculations still don't change what you write inside of the measure impacts the calculation and the second thing that impacts the calculation is how your relationships are running and how your data model is structured so those two things impact the calculation not the holding table all right the seventh one has actually a mix of two mistakes i didn't want to create a video that had eight mistakes so i'm clubbing two mistakes in the single one they actually related the first one is not formatting your measure so if you have a measure that you have written in power bi and that is also working and if you just kind of dump that measure and somebody's trying to make sense of that measure it's going to be very very hard even debugging this particular measure can probably induce errors of you know the bracket closure and things like that so it's always a good practice to format your measure the problem that a lot of people face is that they don't know how to format the measure they don't know where to press enter they don't know where to indent the measure so what you can actually do is once you write the measure you can take that measure and put it in the dax formatter tool which is daxformatter.com created by sql bi guys you can take a look at their site and of course this site daxformatter.com just paste your measure here and then click on format this is going to beautifully format the measure and you can then take this formatted measure copy that and paste that back into your power bi model this is going to work absolutely fine 
The second mistake that a lot of people actually make is not writing enough comments to explain what the measure is actually doing. So for now, you're able to crack a very difficult measure that is cool, but your future self is not going to forgive you for not writing comments. So I am actually guilty of committing this mistake over and over again. So I have to get into the habit of writing more comments, but I'm suggesting you that if you write enough comments, it will be far easier to take a look at the measure and understand what the measure is actually doing. So of course, write comments. All right, those were the seven most common mistakes and misconceptions that I have seen people committing while writing DAX. If you have any misconceptions or mistakes that you have seen people around you are committing, why don't you put them down in the comments and let's just get the conversation going over there. One more thing that if you're trying to learn DAX right from scratch and build up to a level where you start solving more real time, more practical problems using your own data, I highly, highly recommend that you take a look at my DAX course. It has everything right from the fundamental level to the level where you start solving more practical and more real time business problems using your own data. Let me know if you have any questions around this and I'll be happy to help. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.